I have often been asked how I began a career in aviation. The path to flying started out on a runway, not on an aircraft, but on a speeding motorcycle. In this episode, come with us on a one-of-a-kind journey of speed, spectacular views, and the freedom of flight in this hidden paradise lovingly preserved by its people. So how did flying begin for me? In the 70s, after having done almost everything exciting on a motorcycle, my friend Melo Galvez proposed that we test the speed of our bikes in the taxiway of the old domestic airport. With no traffic and easier access back then, we raced our bikes on the West Maintenance Ramp taxiway. After one pass, we saw a sign saying, Learn to fly. And the rest was history. So I was very happy to be invited by friends who both ride and fly. I meet with Fabian and Jimmy, distributors of several motorcycle brands in the area. Yes, this is the home of uh, Vespa in Mindanao. I'd like to take a look. Please. <sighs> So Jimmy, what, what brands do you carry? We have multi-brands. If you want to do road trips, or you just want to go around the city, we make sure that we have the motorcycle that will fit your need. Can I try everything, Fabian? You're supposed to, <laughs> after seeing all these beautiful bikes. You all ride here. Everybody knows everybody through motorcycling. You meet the best people on the road. I'm excited already. <laughs> They also show me around their workshop for repairs and servicing. We make sure that our mechanics are well trained. It's just like with aviation, maintenance is very important it's to enable you to sell. We always say that the key to sales is the after sales. Of course. Jimmy is also a member of On Any Sunday Riders Club, started in 1987 by bike enthusiasts in the area. At the break of dawn, we assembled the vibrant Earth Movers hangar in the old Davao City Airport. The motorcycles kept rolling in until there were about 60 nice-looking bikes parked at the hangar. I was very thrilled to meet the guys and go for a nice Sunday ride. Fabian let me try the Moto Guzzi Stelvio, a bike of Italian design made for long-distance riding. I tried to get the feel of it. And its smooth running engine made me feel right at home with it. Anybody who has a problem, just uh, stop and then the recovery vehicle will pick you up. After a safety briefing and some picture taking, we started our engine. Our destination was another airport, the Mati City Airstrip. It was a slow, safe start as we weaved out of Davao City with its 30 km per hour speed limit. As we 
got out into the highways. Everyone excitedly revved up and enjoyed the scenic ride. As we entered the Val Oriental, Part of biking is the stop to get the best food on the road. Of course, this, we are talking of the chicken egg. The other we're eggs are something else. <laughs> <laughs> now, Andrew will never eat balut. <laughs> After a quick stop, we were back on the road. The views were becoming more and more beautiful as we rode further. We also found ourselves banking and turning more often as the road started to curve more and more. The road then followed the Davao Gulf, passing the scenic Pujada Bay. Here, we stop our engines so we do not wake the sleeping dinosaur. This is another favorite stop of the guys. Because from here, we could see that island that looks like a sleeping dinosaur. Can you see the shape? As we rested on the stop, it was a good chance to see the other bikes the members had and sample the local fruits being sold by the roadside, including the king of fruits, the durian. Everybody thinks they have nice bikes, but they don't have durian like me. <laughs> Come and get it. <laughs> Forget about Motogusi. Forget about Harley. Forget about BMW. <laughs> After taking in the view, we were off. Mati is only a few kilometers away. We reach Mati Airport's sprawling airfield. As we rolled in our bikes next to the airplanes. It was an amazing sight. Fabian, thank you very much for uh, convincing me to do this. The bike was perfect. I really enjoyed the whole morning. <laughs> After that enjoyable ride, let's fly. I'm okay. ready to fly. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> when we come back, I discover one of Mindanao's best kept secrets. Our ride from Davao to the city of Mati, I was ready for the next thrill as we assembled for an early morning flight. Most of the guys are also members of the Mindanao Saga Flying Club based in the city of Mati. Yesterday, I was with these guys on a motorcycle, but this morning, it's a totally different story. How did the club really start? We started the club by coming here on a motorbike. It was for the purpose of testing the capability of our motorcycles. <laughs> Did you know that's how I started also? What a coincidence, huh? It was an idle place, I thought, of what about forming a club here, a flying club. Such a beautiful location. This is real paradise. So, huh? so even when you're not flying, there are so many other things to do, from the beach to the mountains to the scenery, absolutely fantastic. I should consider bringing an airplane here. Can I hang her? Can I put a hang her? Well, I think you are now required. <laughs> <laughs> Not welcome. Huh? Not welcome. <laughs> required now. <laughs> so I will only do that if my old flying body will guarantee to fly here as well. 
This is a requirement also. <laughs> the Mindanao Saga Flying Club aims to make flying more accessible for everyone. The club's best offering may be the unforgettable flying experience over Mati's stunning beachscapes. So today, we traded our helmets for headsets as we planned to do a formation fly. We had the whole airport to ourselves as we taxied to the runway. It was nice to see several microlights taxiing into formation. It was actually my first time to fly with Terry, even if I have known him for the longest time. Terry showed me how short the takeoff roll of this airplane was, as we literally jumped off the ground. As soon as we are airborne, it was like being transported into an entirely different world. With its green mountains, tall coconut trees, blue sapphire waters, Mati's beauty, as seen from above, is beyond compare. We then flew in formation and made a low pass over the field just to make the others on the ground envious of the fun we were having. Terry, perhaps wanting to get the scare of his life, invited me to have control. I found the aircraft very light and responsive. Although I was not used to flying stick with the throttle on my right hand instead of the left. But pretty soon, I was able to get the hang of it. We proceeded to land on the runway. Terry pulled one flap whose lever was unusually located on the rear. I was not used to the high RPMs of the Rotax engine, so I focused on the airspeed instead. I had to exert a bit of effort on the rudder to keep the airplane aligned on the runway. I carried on a little bit of power, and as we slowed down, my tail dragger instinct kept me alive. With a bike, an airplane, and no traffic, what more can anyone ask for? No longer content with just seeing Maddie's beauty from afar, I ventured into the city to see it up close. Mati City is the capital of Davao Oriental. Surrounded by sandy bays and mountain formations, Mati sits at the southern part of Mindanao. At the center of the city is the newly opened Subangan Museum. I was met by Lirna, who showed me around the impressive exhibits. I heard so many good things about your museum. Because this is a pride for Davao Oriental, I would like to tour your inside. In the middle of the museum is a magnificent skeletal structure. This is Davor, the Akko name for Davao Oriental. It's a sperm whale, isn't it? It is believed to be a 47-year-old sperm whale. Lirna takes me upstairs to see the other exhibits. A good portion is dedicated to the Mandaya and Kalagan tribes, two of the Vau Oriental's ethno-linguistic groups. Before the Spanish came here, they were existing yes, already. Exactly. Information on the tribe's traditional music, weapons, dresses were displayed, showing a very rich culture. There were also interactive exhibits like the view of the pygmy forest of Mount Hamigitan. It's almost 2,000 hectares of bonsai field. Recently inaugurated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Subangan Museum offered a very comprehensive overview of Mati's unique natural and cultural heritage and gave me a good idea of the things I cannot miss while in Mati. That evening, I had the pleasure of meeting the mayor of Mati, 
Give me your card. I'm so happy to be here. It's oh. the first time. Wow. <laughs> you know how we greet in the local dialect? It's madayao na pagabot. Madayao na pagabot. Wife Baby and his sister Tanya welcomed me into their city. We had dinner at the shores of the famous Dahigan Beach. I was also lucky to catch a performance by the Mati National High School, champions of the cultural dance competition in the Kadayawan Festival in Davao. When we come back, I meet some of Mati's most colorful characters who teach me a thing or two about their way of life. <laughs> I continue to explore the city of Bati, a hidden beach paradise in the heart of Davao Oriental. Along the shores of the Hican Beach, I meet the Amihan Boys, a group of kids whose passion for skimboarding and surfing is unparalleled. In fact, they have competed abroad and have taken home the top awards. So if I'm going to learn skimboarding, I better learn from the best. And I think I am in very good company as I talk to Bayugyo, a world champion skimboarder. It can't be that difficult. Lesson number one, start young. Dahikan, which means to come in from the sea, is also a favorite nesting site for hawksbills and olive ridley turtles, two species that are nearing extinction. With the Hican as their playground, the kids have grown to be very environmentally conscious and have been trained to take care of the marine life in the area. Mali's surrounding waters are teeming with marine life, and today I hope to meet some of them. I sailed out with the Amihan guys into the Hican's waters just as the sun was rising. June Plaza, one of the guys, has worked closely with researchers from all over the world. From being a fisherman, he has now committed himself to taking care of the marine life in the area. Not too far from shore, we spotted a pod of protruding fins, disappearing and appearing again. We were able to catch up with them, and a big pod of dolphins happily swam alongside and in front of our boat. Seeing a pod this big, Thriving in their natural environment is remarkable. Aside from dolphins and marine turtles, the Hican is also home to a species of sea cow known locally as the dugong. We went around the bay in search of the feeding dugongs. Some parts of the bay are also good snorting sites. Taking care not to hit any corals with our anchor, Bayugyog, who seems to be able to balance on anything, finds a good place to drop anchor. I went for a swim and spotted healthy corals and seagrass underwater. I also spotted this big colorful jellyfish swimming in the clear waters. We moved to our next stop and anchored our boat off Buhada Bay where the dugongs are usually seen feeding at this time of the day. Looking at the seagrass, June was able to see where the dugongs have been feeding and we began to trace their path. But unfortunately, the chewed up seagrass 
did not lead us to the elusive dugongs that day. From the Hikan, I headed back to the airstrip where Tanya Rabat and Ray Acosta were waiting for me. Ray was flying us on a Bell 206 Jet Ranger. With the coordinates on hand, we flew into the mountainous regions of Caraga. The Mandaya were the earliest settlers in the Val del Norte. And today, we are going to visit one of the tribe's remaining villages. We passed one mountain after the other, and we had to climb higher and higher. It felt like being in the lost world, seeing thick jungle and waterfalls below. A smoke signal from the village assured us that we are in the right place. We didn't realize that the village was at an altitude of close to 4,000 feet. Hidden in the mountains is the Mandaya village of Sangam. We were welcomed by the chieftain and his daughter along with the rest of the village. Sangam is one of the remaining locations in Davao Oriental where descendants of the old Mandayan tribes preserve the traditional way of life. Mandaya means upstream or upland people. Before beginning to film or interact with the villagers, the ritual sacrifice of a chicken was done and prayers were recited in a free-flowing chant that characterizes the Mandaya language and poetry. So everybody will take a sip of that wine. Ensuring unity among those present. Daisy, one of the chieftain's daughters, was my translator and guide through the village. Her father is the Likid, or chieftain. And she and her sister Christine are Jambuki, or Mandaya princesses. Descending from a mix of different races, at the height of maritime exploration, the Mandaya are characterized by having angular features, defined noses, and high foreheads. Planting is one of the main sources of livelihood. Root crops and bananas are cultivated along the sides of the mountains. A kudlong, a two-string guitar, is played during special occasions, or simply to entertain. Dancing is an important part of the culture, with the beats dictated by a gimbal drum made of deer skin. Steps usually imitate the movement of birds. Visitors were expected to participate in the dancing. Mayor Alicia Mori of Caraga, where the village is located, has been working closely with the tribal leaders of the Mandaya. Having their own political structure since ancient times, the Mandaya is governed by a council of elders called the Mangkatadong. The chieftain consults the council in making important decisions for the community. Daisy takes me around the village to closely see the Mandaya way of life. Houses are usually mounted on stilts high above the ground. <laughs> So it's bamboo parin po siya. Corn is grown in the mountain slopes, dried in ground using a wood grinder. Oh, sige, I'll try nga. Ah, hindi. I'm very strong. Oh, you're so good. It is then pounded to take out the husks. Meanwhile, 
The men of the village are busy making wine made of sugar cane and wild ginger. I see. I can smell the ginger. Maisu. <laughs> the Mandaya has a natural inclination for the arts, even crafting ornaments. Carefully embroidered hand-woven cloth called dagmai are made by the women of the village. No pattern is followed, and the intricate design and beadwork is from the weaver's own artistic expression. Just by feel. Just by feel, just by imagination and wisdom. Kikita mo na lang sir, nagkaroon na ng magandang output, <laughs> magandang dagong design. Yes. Just like many other traditions, the Mandaya women have been passing the art form to the next generations. I was also privileged to share an authentic Mandaya feast. Freshwater eel, shrimps caught from the streams were cooked in bamboo tubes. This one? It's bita, the tadpole. The tadpole? Yeah, it's delicious. This is huge. The frog must be this big. <laughs> Just before leaving the village, I wanted to share the joys of flying with the kids and tried to spark their imagination with games and toy airplanes. Hopefully someday, one of these kids will be flying back to their village, bringing home stories from other lands. As a final gesture of thanks, I present the chieftain with a pilot shirt. <laughs> He'd prefer the helicopter than the shirt. Which he replaced with a traditional dagu passed on from one generation to the next. The people's deep commitment in preserving their home's natural beauty and traditional culture is very inspiring. I was happy to remember the joys of riding and flying with friends who share the same excitement. Mati is truly the perfect place to pursue these hobbies. Because when the road ends, a runway begins and the sky becomes your playground. This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari! Yeah.